Hey roadies, this is Adriana from Roadie Free Radio. In this episode, Larry speaks with St. Louis-based front of house engineer Tiffany Hendren. Tiffany has worked with Alex Cameron, Betty Who, The Miracles, El Monstero, the Definitive Pink Floyd Tribute Experience, and several more artists. In this short clip, Tiffany talks about her experience on her first tour. Touring with the band Silent Film for six weeks, Tiffany would also be jumping on as front of house for the first time. What would come from these six weeks would be the ups and downs of touring and learning the ropes of front of house, thanks to Google. If you want to hear more about Tiffany, make sure to check out the full episode number 145 from September 9th, 2019. Thank you for listening, and thank you for subbing. Here are Larry and Tiffany. Do you remember getting on the bus, the van, the car, whatever, for your first tour tour? Yes. And how you felt leaving for that and what you were doing what were you going to go do monitors front of house um i got hired to do front of house for a band called a silent film mm-hmm. um that was because i'd i'd been doing um i was i was working for like a, a motown tribute doing like fly dates and that sort of stuff and that was very um el monstero like like everything was insane every day um but that I don't really consider that to be like a first tour sort of situation because mm-hmm. it was just like fly into Cincinnati, do a show at a terrible venue and then fly home, you know? Right. right. Um, so yeah, getting in the van for the first time was insane. I got hired to do front of house for a band called a silent film. Um, they are to this day, like probably my four favorite people on earth. Um, they were, it was, it was, they were, they were really great, but, um, <clears throat> It was the first front of house experience I had Mm -hmm. because I had been doing monitors at the pageant for, you know, however long it was. Yeah. And you could probably tell me better than I could. Um, (laughs) All all the mid, you know, all the teen years just meld together. Yep. But uh, so I've been doing monitors at the pageant like forever. And I had been doing, I'd done front of house at the Halo Bar, which was like some vocal mics and a kick mic, you know. So then they hired me to do front of house for this tour it was a six-week tour and i was like i took it but then i was like i don't actually know if i'm good at front of house like i have no idea um and that's where my mentors sort of came in really handy because basically randy allowed me to jump in front, jump into front of house like and go mix a bunch of shows before i left and the pageant's like kind of a weird room to mix because it's really wide mm-hmm. um and sort of, it's not like, it's not bad. It's just like, if you don't really have any front of house experience, you might be like, what the fuck is going on? Which is what I was doing. Right. So I didn't leave. I left a little more confident in like my use of, you know, levels and outboard gear, but not really confident in my mixing abilities. And the first show of the tour was at the Casbah in San Diego. And I basically flew in the night before met a bunch of like British guys that was like two Brits, two Americans, three, three Brits, two Americans. That was it. Yeah. And, uh, so I met all these guys and I was like, this is going to be weird. Like sharing a room with the singer. Like that was also weird, (laughs) you know? And he's, he's like, he's great. So it wasn't like that weird, but it was like, I don't know you. you know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, got to the Casbah and that room is probably my least favorite. I think if there was a venue I would burn to the ground, that one is like in the top two probably. Um, yeah. So I did, uh, did the first show and I don't know if you've ever been to the Casbah, but it's basically like two speakers that should be part of a line array, but Mm -hmm. aren't. And then there's a giant mirror on the wall, ne- like directly next to that, to the, to the right hang. It's not even a hang. Wow. It's like one speaker. Right. So it was, uh, the show was not awful, but it was not good. And uh, then we had three days off for promo in LA. So I'm with these guys. I've never met until this moment. Um, we just had a mediocre show and then I have to spend three days with them doing radio stuff. <laughs> And so then the next show was at the Troubadour and that's an even, that's also kind of weird. Cause you're like up in that weird crow's nest, like way over to the left. Yeah. 
And I was like, well, this is it. I'm getting fired. And, uh, and the and show you, was actually, were you, I'm sure it wasn't lost on you that it's the troubadour. No, no. Yeah, absolutely not. Right. Um, so you were probably like, holy shit. Oh God. And then, okay. So, so many things about that show were just absolutely ridiculous. They ordered Indian food. Like you do. It was the first time I'd ever had Indian food. <laughs> It was delicious. Um, but I was like nervous about that because every depiction of eating Indian food in popular culture is about how sick it's going to make you, which is an experience I've never had. Like Indian food is incredible. Yeah. But it was, it was, you know, the first time I'd ever had Indian food. Then they sprung on me. Oh, yeah, we're recording the set. And then also we're videotaping the set. And also all of our management is here an hour before the show started. I thought I was going to throw up the entire time. Wow. <laughs> it was, wow. it was a lot. Yeah. Um, Oh, it was rough. And so basically I got up there, the first song started and I'd been like listening to them for weeks, essentially like since I got hired. So I knew all the songs I knew like, and they had like a lot of interesting, they had like an interesting track set up. And so I wasn't entirely sure like what was coming up where at any given time. Uh-huh. I was like, okay, I know that there's supposed to be a synth sound here, but which one of these three sets of stereo tracks is it on? You know, so I spent a lot of time like soloing things and just, it was insane. Um, but the show went really well. And at least most of them were sold on me after that. <laughs> How long was this run supposed to be? It was, uh, I want it was, it, I think, it, I think that was a six-week run. Okay. Yeah. Because I did six weeks with them and then, like, another five and then a bunch of, like, like went to Mexico and that sort of stuff. But um, they they wound up breaking up, um, like, a year and a half or two years after I started working for them. Okay. I was absolutely devastated. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was very sad. But, um, yeah, so it was just, yeah, like, that that experience was, like, insane. Did you, when did you feel in those six weeks, if you can remember, maybe it was after that Troubadour show that you finally sort of kicked in, your confidence sort of kicked in. You're like, okay, I got this. I mean, look, every room's different. Every night's different. The whole thing, you got to re, you know, redo it. But I would imagine at some point you start to get your legs and you're like, okay. It was an interesting roller coaster of being like, I got this. And then coming up to a console I'd never seen before and being like, what the fuck? I'm getting fired today. <laughs> and there, there was like never any chance that they were going to fire me. It was not going to be a thing. Sure. But like the first time I saw one of those like Soundcraft impressions, I was like, this is it. This is the day I'm getting fired. Fuck it. All right. This is fine. That, that desk sucks. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was just like. Yeah, it was... Uh, Did you voice a lot of this fear to the band ever or no? Were you no. Like, no. You're like, no, <laughs> I'm just going to... Inter- and and this is... I mean, we got internet at this point. Maybe we got cell phones going on. Are you calling people? Like, you know, oh my God, I don't know what to do. What do I do with this thing? Um, and how helpful were some of the... I mean, I know I'm, I'm asking you questions about those early early 2010 years. You don't remember a damn thing, but... <laughs> yeah, for were sure. The, were the house folks helpful? Whoa, shit. Sorry. Uh-oh, Hold on. That's all right. Yep. Yep. Nope. Here we are. Sorry. Um, sometimes, sometimes, uh, I remember I got to a venue in Denver and it was a bunch of people who didn't usually work there. And it was the first time I'd seen a pro two literally ever. Um, now my favorite desk at the time I was like, fuck this desk. But, um, so they were like, I was like, yeah, I need my outputs patched. And they were like, yeah, I don't know how to do that. It's like, how do you not, like, you work here, like, how, and you're responsible for this debt. Like, how do you not know how to do that? And then, um, and then I got burned by the saving on that thing, as I think everybody does the first time. Like, save, I saved the, like, the, the guy there, like, at least knew how to save it. Mm-hmm. And then when I got to the next time I saw one of those, a rough trade in New York, um, I did my, I did my sound check, got everything done. And, Basically, all he told me was, you have to save twice. And I was like, so hit save twice, which is, I, I don't know what you know about digital boards, but that's not how it works. Right. You have, you have to save your scene, you store your scene, save your show. And all I did was save the show. So everything that I did before that didn't, uh, didn't save. So we go to get, we get the changeover and I, they load my scene or I load my scene, I forget. And then there's just no sound. There's no anything. There's no nothing. I was like, what is going on? 
and basically it worked out like so whoever was doing patching on it, I think it was a one tech there, had to come back and like figure out like what was going on, repatched all my outputs, and I was like, well, I guess I'm just rolling with whatever happened in Denver. This is fine. Um, and the show wound up being fine, but it was just like really stressful. And at the yeah. time, I didn't have a really big network. Mm-hmm. I didn't have like a ton of people I can call. Like Randy at the pageant has been on analog his entire career. Like he's not a, he's not a guy I could call up and be like, how do you work this Pro Two? Like, right, right. what's up with the X thirty two? Like he just he would be like, I'm not the person to talk to, and I don't know who you should talk to. Um, I mean, he'd help me work it out, but like, it wasn't that was not his forte. Right. So it, it was really like me and Google on that first tour. Wow. Was, yeah. So. It was crazy. Hello, Google. Hey, what's happening, roadies? It's Larry here. Just wanted to thank you so much for listening to this short clip. I really hope you got something out of it. If you can take two seconds to head over to iTunes and drop us a review or a comment, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Keep listening. Keep coming back. Stay healthy out there. And remember, no roadies, no rock and roll. (laughs) 